John, good morning. Let's start with the international talent. Uh, Al and I were speculating about Yoshinobu Yamamoto earlier. What do you know about his free agency campaign? Yeah, I heard Alex break down. Fantastic. Terrific pitcher. 1.82 ERA. 25 years old. That's probably the key. Uh, we believe there are seven teams in the mix at this point. Yankees, Dodgers, Mets, and Giants all have had meetings. I do believe the Phillies, Red Sox, and Jays will get meetings as well. At least that is the word right now. Speculation. Again, this is speculation is that he would like the big stage. And I'm with you, Matty. I don't think there's anything wrong with going to the big team. And uh, the Yankees and the Dodgers, I'm going to put them as co-favorites at the moment. Don't hold me to it because, you know, he can decide whatever he wants to do between those seven teams. But uh, Yankees and Dodgers, I think, are the favorites at this point. Obviously, Otani was in that meeting as Russell Dorsey uh, related there. Um, you know, the interesting question, I think, is if he does want the big stage, does he want to share it with Otani? Obviously, the Dodgers are a fantastic team. Otani makes them even better. Maybe he wants to go and be part of a super team, or maybe like a little bit more of the spotlight himself, and hard to believe he can get more of the spotlight in New York, but that's probably the case here. What a perfect market for him when you consider the two biggest money teams in the sport are the two teams with the biggest need for starting pitching. I mean, he's really in a great spot here, and we've been following this, of course, all winter long. Is it fair then, John, to uh, to call Shota Imanaga a 1A or a B or a backup plan? I know he's a little older, different pitcher. Where is his free right. agency? Right. Well, everybody's a little older than Yamamoto, who's 25. Uh, Imanaga is 30, which is the normal age of a free agent pitcher. He pitched the uh, clinching game for Japan in the WBC, and uh, he's really waiting on what goes on with Yamamoto because all the losers in Yamamoto should be in on Imanaga. We know of the Red Sox, the Cubs, the Dodgers, and the Mets, all four of those teams in on Imanaga. I also have heard that the Yankees have checked in as well. Again, the Yankees are hopeful. I don't want to say confident. They're hopeful on Yamamoto. If they get Yamamoto, we'll not get Imanaga. But if not, they will be in the mix. Imanaga is going to do really, really well. Much better than we would have thought, probably. Left-hander, crafty, very good pitcher. Not in the category of Yamamoto. Hey, John, where do you think, I mean, we're showing two Japanese pitchers and Yamamoto, whose stuff I like, but where do you, how do you rank our, the free agent pitchers right now? I know we got Jordan Montgomery, of course, Blake right. Snell. Like, is it, you know, if you were to rank as they come off right. the board, as we always have to wait for the, the big dogs. Well, I think the big question all along is who, who's the better catch between Yamamoto and Snell? And it's obvious everybody wants Yamamoto right now. He, he has a deadline, too, January 4th. He's got to have a deal done by January 4th. But I think he's just extremely popular because he's 25 years old. But every big market team was in on Yamamoto. Now, it's been a window down. Right now, the Cubs and Cardinals were not hearing of their names. They did seem to be interested. You know, we do think that he would like the big stage. So that's probably why we're looking at New York or Los Angeles. But I guess the big question is who gets the biggest contract between Yamamoto and Snell? Yamamoto will get the longest contract. I heard you talking about long contracts earlier. Obviously, Garrett Cole signed nine years. Uh, back in the day, Wayne Garland signed 10 years. I'm old enough to remember that. You two probably are not. But <laughs> basically, nine years. We're going to count nine years as the record. Garrett Cole, Yamamoto should be able to beat that. Let's say he gets 12 years for $24 million. That's $288 million, plus the posting fee, which would be close to $50 million. It's a lot of money. So I, I guess Yamamoto should be ranked one right now at Snell two, Montgomery, three. Montgomery, they're kind of using Rodon. They're saying 162 million should be able to get that. I mean, I never would have thought that when he was in New York, but look, uh, he, he certainly performed in the playoffs 2-0 and with a 1-2-9 ERA against the rival Astros. So I still like Texas uh, for Montgomery, but uh, he's going to do well too as he, he's the number three guy. All right, let's point. give me your best 30 seconds on each of these guys. Now I'm going to rapid fire some free agent starters. <laughs> let's start with Snell just had his 31st birthday reigning right. Cy Young Award winner. He's got two on the shelf where for him. Uh, you know, I like the Giants. Uh, he's 13 and two with a 259 ERA against the Dodgers. That's pretty good for the Giants. If they're of a mind like we're not going to beat them as far as super team. Let's do it the way we did it before, how we won three World Series with pitching and defense. They've obviously added Jung Hu Lee and uh, 113 million, so they've helped the defense in center field. 
You're still looking at Chapman, but to me, the Giants make sense for Snell. The Angels are going to be on all sorts of pitching right now, and they obviously have money to burn. Not going to rule out the Mets. The Dodgers not in on Snell for whatever reason. They're in on everybody else, but not Snell. I'm yeah. going to go Giants. That's interesting. All right, you mentioned Jordan Montgomery earlier, and early in this hot stove season, we, we heard about the Cardinals and Yankees, two former employers who would love to have him back for obvious reasons. Where for the World Series champ? Yeah, I'm going to stick with the Rangers. I, I've seen somebody report it's not going to be the Rangers, but to me, it makes too much sense. Uh, they obviously have the money. They've got a TV issue right now that they've got to work out. But, I mean, he, he dominated the Astros, and they and beating the Astros in the seven games was huge. So, to me, the Rangers make the most sense. Not going to rule out the Red Sox or the Yankees, which would be interesting because, obviously, it was a little bit of an uneasy breakup with the Yankees. But, hey, the Yankees aren't looking at every pitcher. They didn't look at Erod. They didn't look at some of the other guys. They are interested in Jordan Montgomery, but that's, again, if they don't get the big guy, Yamamoto. All right, lastly, uh, Lucas Giolito, who yeah. uh, famously resurrected his career with the Dave Coggin pocket path style, the short armor now. He was great a couple years ago in Chicago. Bounced around yeah. a little bit last year. He's on the market this winter. Where for Lucas? Yeah, he's going to do well, even though he had a rough year this past year, giving up a lot of home runs. I think people still believe in him. Uh, you know, I'm looking at the Dodgers, the Mets, the Red Sox. So that's three of the teams in the Yamamoto sweepstakes and also the Royals. Um, I've heard Arizona as well, but now they've signed Erod. So I'm going to suggest they're a little bit less likely. I, you know, I might say Red Sox, although they're in on Yamamoto. I'm not ruling them out on Yamamoto, and they definitely need starting pitching in the worst way. But I'm going to go with Red Sox for Giolito. I like that idea, too. And uh, it's going to be interesting to watch if one of these guys jumps out and signs before Yamamoto or if everybody's waiting for that January 4th deadline. Interesting. John Heyman with us on a Thursday. John, thank you. Thank you.